Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again. It's actually been quite a while since I've been in front of the camera like this, and uh, there is a good reason for it. Now, <laughs> there's two things I want to start with this video with. One, this video may never see the light of day, so if you are seeing this, it's because either A, this experience went really, really well, and I want to applaud them for fixing their issues and having a good experience, or B, it went horrible and I had to return the vehicle and... Uh, yeah, so I, either way, I'm kind of nervous, and that's the whole reason for this video while I'm recording it. Uh, also, if you haven't noticed, if you're a longtime subscriber of the channel, I haven't been uploading as frequently as I used to. I want to say I'm apologizing for that, but to be honest, the real reason is because I'm putting all my time and resources into my second channel, which is Vicarious Nick Gaming. Link in the description below. I highly recommend giving it a shot and giving it a subscription. If you like my content here, uh, it's the same personality, same me, it's just more in line with gaming stuff. And I've been very much enjoying making content for that. But all that aside, we are moving forward and talking about Carvana. I have actually never heard of this prior to the last few days. And I know that's going to come across as maybe like, whoa, how have you never heard of Carvana? Do you not watch TV? And no, I don't. I haven't watched television, cable in over probably eight years now, maybe longer than that. It's been a very long time since I had cable television. And... Even like regular advertisements on YouTube and stuff, I use Adblock most of the time. I know it's kind of sacrilegious being a YouTuber myself, but if it is somebody that I want to support, I turn it off for that specific channel. Yada, 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 that's a whole different story. But needless to say, I've never really heard of Carvana until about four or five days ago. And the reason I heard about it was because I've been doing a lot of research for the past like four or five months trying to get a specific vehicle that I've been very excited to get as my own car. This is my first ever vehicle purchase in my life. Uh, every vehicle I've had prior to now, I've gotten either through a hand-me-down or my parents. And this is the first time I'm actually shoveling on my own cash for my own car. And I've, of course, I want to do as much research as possible on the vehicle. And I've narrowed it down to the car that I want is a 2020 or newer Civic, Honda Civic. And I wanted the Sport Edition as the trim that I really enjoyed looking at. And I had a couple of little features here and there and a little bit better motor. Not as good with the fuel economy, but still good performance and stuff like that. So that's why the Sport Edition is the one I was going for. However, when I was doing my research over the last five months, I've come to the realization that even going used, these cars are very expensive. And, I, you know, this is not luxury cars. This is just mid-sedan prices. And we're looking anywhere from twenty dollars to $35,000. Whereas on the low end, the $20,000, you're looking at... 100,000 or more miles in these cars. They're roughly in the 2017 to 2019 range. And they're a little bit older than I like, and they look pretty beat up. And you're still paying 20 grand. So in my opinion, I'm like, well, I might as well just shovel out a little bit extra money and get a car that I'm really happy with. And that's where just the other day I came across a 2020 Honda Civic, but it's a Sport Edition hatchback. I never knew I'd go for a hatchback, but looking at the Sport Edition of the Civic, I love the look of it. I think it looks really cool. It looks aggressive. And I've heard really good reviews in these cars. They're very well maintained and they are very reliable and they're very good with fuel economy as well. So that's really good to see. Yes, it is, I guess at this point, like the dream car. It's the perfect choice. And the only place I was able to find this vehicle for sale, and this is without having to drive over 10 plus hours away, to get said vehicle. And I know some people have even flown to places to buy new vehicles, but that's just not on my budget right now. And I don't like flying. So that's where I came across Carvana. And it's a really cool system in that you can purchase the vehicle online fully without having to go to a dealership or anything. They make it pretty streamlined. It seemed pretty simple to me, especially as a first time car buyer and almost deceptively so. And this is where I'm going to get into my like nervousness and my anxieties and the reason for this video. And it just, they made it so streamlined, so easy to go through, easy prompts, understandable. And when you're looking at the actual vehicle, they give you a lot of information on it. You know, they give you all the features, they give you the previous owners, they tell you it has been certified via CarMax, which is cool to see because you have to, usually have to pay for that certification. And it even shows like all these really detailed pictures of the entire vehicle. Supposedly, this is the vehicle you're going to be buying, but you're buying it online. And the way it works is they have two options. Either they ship it to your house, which sadly they don't allow shipping at her address. So the other option is you can go to one of their locations. And this is where they kind of got famous for is their giant, essentially vending machines for vehicles. You've probably driven past them before. They're a giant tower of glass with a ton of vehicles stacked on top of each other. 
If you've seen one of the recent Mission Impossible movies, at the end of the movie, it takes place actually in one of their Carvana establishments. So they're really cool, they're unique, and they're a new concept, and they exploded over the last few years. But along with that, they also exploded, exploded with a ton of negative news articles on them, and this is what got me really worried. Now, I'm going to get into the pros and cons of this, and I'm going to say the reason why I eventually went with this anyway, and I, I put the money into it, and we're going to be picking up my car in a week from today, uh, next Monday. And that being said, uh, the reason I ended up going with it is not only for the price, I think the price is pretty decent, but based off the details they have on their website and the pictures and everything, this car looks to be in mint condition, supposedly. It's uh, only got 27,000 miles on it, and it's a 2020. So I thought that was pretty amazing, you know, for the deal. And again, a lot of this just screams too good to be true. So if something goes wrong, if it's not the way it turns out to be that it's showing online, I'm not going to be surprised. But the big thing that kept me saying I'm going to give it a try is their seven days or less money back guarantee. And what that means is you can drive out a vehicle bring it to your house and use it for seven full days, fully inspect it, bring it to an inspector, whatever you want to do. And if you don't like the car, you can bring it back for a full refund or swap it out for a different vehicle. And that whole concept to me is really cool. And I like that. I, I think that does add a little bit more reassurance to the buyer. Now, the major downside of this though, is I live three hours away from their nearest facility. So if I were to not like the vehicle or if I found something really horrible with it that just wasn't worth fixing for the price, to return it does suck because I have to take an entire day off of work to not only go get it on Monday, but I would have to take another day off of work to go return it within seven days. So that is a big bummer. But again, this is something where I feel it's worth it because I don't feel like I'm like, yes, you are signing up for a finance contract if you're not paying it in cash. And you are signing all these documents and whatnot to get yourself into this process of like, yes, you are signing a contract and you're getting yourself into it. But in their exact policy, it states that if you don't like the car for whatever, for whatever reason, within seven days, you can return and get all your money back. Now, there is one fee for delivery. Now, that's whether you deliver it right to your house. It's a more expensive fee. Or if you deliver it to a location like I'm doing and I'm going to pick it up, it's a much cheaper fee, but it's still a fee and that is non-refundable. But it is what it is. I guess that's one of those things you're just going to eat the loss if the car turns out not to be the way it's supposed to be. So with all that, it seems really cool, right? Really too good to be true at this point. It seems like it's a fully detailed vehicle. It's certified used. They have a really good warranty program. That was actually another big thing as to why I really wanted to go with these guys is because for $7 a month, which is just insanely cheap to me, added on top of your car payment, you get so much coverage, not only from just typical things breaking down over time, but even like the replace your tires, your windshield wipers, anything you can think of really, except for just damages to like getting in a car accident, right? That wouldn't count. That would be through your own insurance plan. But everything else you can think of, if anything goes wrong, even details of the vehicle, like scratches and stuff that you didn't you know, notice at the time of when you bought it, that is all covered for 90,000 miles. So that I think for seven bucks a month is a huge steal. And if that all goes to plan, I think that's a great part of the deal. And from what I've seen in the reviews, nobody's ever complained about the warranties. And most people that I've seen with positive reviews said that their warranty worked great, uh, that they were able to use a very local mechanic. They had no issues getting the, like the rebate for it. And they didn't even have a copay, which is pretty crazy. Usually these you know, insurance stuff, they or warranties, they have some type of copay, whether it's like 50 bucks to 100 bucks, but you're still saving hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands down the line, depending on the actual repair. But with this, it's fully covered. So that is a huge plus, right? That's a huge draw for me. I just have that ease of mind. Now, getting into the things that are making me worried about going to pick it up. And this I'm hot. I'm trying not to make this a super long video. I'm probably going to cut a ton of this out if this video ever gets out to light of day. But the, the things I've been seeing are a lot of news articles, a lot of YouTube videos of people talking about this on how the entire company itself right now, like as of today, is basically bankrupt. It's getting to that point where they don't even know what they're doing. Uh, the CEOs have come out and been in interviews with these news articles and said, like, we're just trying to survive right now. We're trying to fix our, you know, our mess ups, whatever. But they don't even have a set game plan. And that really scares me now. If I get the vehicle and everything goes fine, I don't care if they go under. I mean, that's it's a business, right? I don't, I shouldn't have to kiss their feet. 
I will be very thankful that this, you know, it all went well and it was as seamless as it as it seems to be. But that being said, you know, if it does go under, that is what it is. They made their mistakes. Now, the mistakes they've made from what I've seen from reviews is one of the biggest ones is that they're really slow at getting people their titles, their registration for the vehicle itself. And it's to the point of a lot of people have gone to the media and even sued the company for this. And they've won, apparently, at least that's what I've, I'm assuming from what I've seen is that they'll have their vehicle. They'll buy it from Carvana, drive off the lot. They get temp They give you temporary plates, right? These temporary little paper plates that it lasts only for 30 days. And now what happens is after the 30 days go by, they fail to even reach out to you to send you these plates that you need, the registration, your title. And it's illegal in every, pretty much every, I think every state in the US, I could be wrong about that, to drive a vehicle that's unregistered. You will be pulled over and you can be arrested for that. And this has happened to a ton of people. So seeing that firsthand, like, you know, after I've purchased the vehicle, I've already put my money towards it and I've signed up for all the stuff and I have the date set up to go pick up the car. Now I start seeing these videos popping up of people saying, like, don't go with Carvana because like I had my vehicle for 11 months and never got a title. And that's just crazy to me that they could get away with that. And that was only two years ago. That being said, the fact that they're still have business, the fact that they're still running to this day, maybe that kind of tells me that it was two years ago and they have fixed their their issues. So this is what I'm praying, right? But looking at their website, even to this day, it still seems kind of fishy with how they do the registration. It states no, you know, hands-free registration. There's no reason to go to a DMV. There's one last stop. We're making it as easy as possible for the consumer. You come to the place, you sign a couple documents, we give you the key and you get some paper plates to put on the car and you're able to drive off the lot without any issues. The only thing you have to do ahead of time, which I've already done, is you have to sign the car up with your current insurance provider. If you don't have any insurance, they won't let you take the car off the lot. So there is at least that little bit of guidance or reassurance, but still the fact that they don't give you a title at the form of purchase, the time of purchase is really weird to me that they have to wait. And now I did a little more research on this. I actually talked to a representative to ease my mind a little bit. And they said that the main reason they don't give you the title at the time of purchase when you pick up the vehicle is because of their seven day money back guarantee. They said it just makes more sense that if you were to take the car off the lot and in two days or three days, whatever, within that seven day period, if you bring the car back, you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole of going to the DMV and getting the title changed back to us. And there's none of that. And that makes sense. It does make sense when you think about it. However, this could lead to them being fishy with you. And apparently this has happened to people where, yeah, let's say the seven days go by. You're not returning the car. You love the vehicle. It seems to be fine. You're sticking with it. But at that point, now, when do I get my registration? When do I get my actual title in the mail? There's no set date on that. And even on their website, it sets we can't we cannot give you a dedicated time of when you will receive your title. There's just it's apparently it's not possible for them to know. And that's what's you know, that drives my anxiety to be like, oh, I don't know. It could happen to me and it might. And if it does, you'll see it in this video. And that's the whole reason for it is to stay away from Carvana or who knows, might be the exact opposite. This might be the, the best experience ever with no issues. And if that's the case, I will support them and I will say, go give them a try. So with that, those are pretty much my main concerns. Uh, other than just if I get there, you know, three hour drive, if I get there, the car may not be the way it shows online. Maybe there's more issues with it than what they're leading on to be. And that's pretty much what I've been seeing from people's reviews from the negative ones, by the way. There's a lot of positive ones still coming out to this day. Literally 15 hours ago, there was like three posts that were all five star and they look like legit people. They look like robots or AI generated reviews, but they could be. But the, the negative ones pretty much state most of the same stuff. It's like it looked great online. You stated there was like minor scratches on the mirror and that was it. When I got to the location, the car had multiple scratches on the bumper and some other places. The steering wheel's gross or like it wasn't clean. There was wrap like dirty wrappers on the floor. Stuff like that does worry me. It shows that they're not properly doing inspections, even though on their website plastered all over. It's like we do this 150 point inspection process, which is great. You know, that, that makes me feel good as a, as a buyer. But if it's not true, if you're just straight up lying to us, that's false advertisement. And that's really fishy. It's It's just... I don't know. It's weird practices that I, I don't want to support. And again, this this could be based off the location because there's tons of different locations all over the US. But 
yeah, the fact that it's happened to so many people through here, through these reviews I went through, that you could get all the way there, three hour drive. That's a long time. Six hours, if you think going back, you know, it's a long time to drive. Um, getting there and you know, you think it's gonna be a dream car. It looks beautiful online and the pictures look really good online, but you get there and it looks tattered and torn and there's rips in the seats and it's just, it smells like smoke maybe or something, you know, like something like that. That would really be a huge bummer because. Yeah, you could use their warranty, which is what they say on their website. Like that's the, the reason for their warranty is you could go to a place and get that stuff fixed and they'll cover it, which is great. But do you really want to deal with that? It should be, you know, it should be based off what they told you in the beginning. They should have had that stuff up front or had a cheaper cost because these cars are not cheap. I won't disclose how much I pay for this car. Maybe I will at the end of the video, you know, if everything goes well. Uh, or if everything goes terrible and I have to legally disclose it, if I use this video, like to sue them or something, I don't know. But that being said, you know, these are not cheap vehicles and this is not a cheap purchase for me. This is by far the biggest purchase I've ever made in my life other than school with loans, <laughs> but loans aside, I mean, this is by far the biggest purchase I've ever made. So I obviously I want this car to be in decent condition, you know, like new, if you get my drift. So if I get there and it's not in that condition, if it's like clearly used condition, especially for having less than 27,000 miles, I'd be very surprised, but it could happen. And uh, yeah, so if that is if that is the case, you know, maybe I'll leave the car there and say I'm done. I'm going to find my I'm going to find the car that I want somewhere else. And that thankfully is my choice. I lose out a little bit of money for the delivery fee, but who cares? Whatever. So let's fast forward in time to Monday. I'll probably have a little bit of a vlog in the vehicle on the way there. And uh, let's go check out and see how it goes. All right, so we're in the vehicle. This is the Honda Civic 2020. It had 27,000 miles on it when I purchased it. I won't really go into the pricing because honestly, I don't think the pricing really matters at this point, but I will have a little bit of uh, something to say about that in a little bit. I just want to go over my main thoughts of my experience with Carvana. Overall, just as a customer, first time purchasing not only a vehicle through Carvana, but a first time purchasing a vehicle in my life. And I've been absolutely in love with the Honda Civics, especially the hatchback. That's the one I went with here is the hatchback sport. And I love this car. I mean, driving it is a breeze. It feels so smooth on the road. I've been very out of the loop when it comes to new features of the newer vehicles. I've been so used to driving cars from 2005 to, well, this is uh, her car is a 2013, which has a lot of bells and whistles with it for sure. But this just is above and beyond with the features of this car from the amazing seven inch display for the touchscreen radio that has Android play and or Android auto, something like that. And then it has the iOS version that you connect your phone to, which is super cool. And then it has all these automated features like automatic slowdown if you're getting behind somebody and you have cruise control initiated, it has keeping lane assistance. And there's so much to get into that the, the video is not about the car. I mean, it technically is, but you know what I mean. It's not about the features of this vehicle or how great the car is. It's about the experience and did Carvana live up to their statements? Am I a satisfied customer? And would I suggest you give them a shot yourself? If you don't want to listen to me ramble and you just want to know a straight up, just honest answer, I would honestly and truthfully say I would go with Carvana and purchase a vehicle from them again. And I, I would also say that you guys should give them a shot yourself. However, I do want to say a couple things about it. So like anybody buying a used vehicle or buying something from somewhere that's new that you're not really used to, you probably are a little bit nervous uh, going into it for the first time. And I got to admit, I was pretty damn nervous going and purchasing a vehicle online that I never saw in person beforehand. You know, putting that down payment on it, choosing the payment schedule, uh, even changing my insurance to a new vehicle that I have still never sat in was a little nerve wracking, I gotta admit. And not only that, but just reading the reviews and 
suffice to say, I mean, it's easier to find negative reviews online than it is to find good reviews. And then the reason for that, if you really think about it, how many times have you had a, uh, not even an amazing experience, but just a good experience at a restaurant, a store, or something like this, did you go out of your way to write a review about that good experience? Maybe if it was, you know, above and beyond, right? I've done that before. I've, I've written really good reviews on great people that I've worked with or customer service, you know, stuff like that. But nine times out of 10, you're probably just gonna be like, wow, that was good, cool. And you might tell your friends about it, but you're not gonna go out of your way to write a review about it. But how many times have you gone out of your way to write a bad review on something you absolutely had a terrible experience with and you want someone to just stay away? You wanna warn people, right, about that situation, about that company, whatever it is. I can bet you nine times out of 10, you probably spent that extra time to write a bad review for somebody. I don't know if that's just human nature or what. It's 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 just, you know, it's common practice these days. So finding negative reviews on Carvana is easier than finding positive reviews. You could look at that as, well, that must mean that the company is, ho is horrible. And every single time you buy something from them, it's terrible. But I, I kept asking myself, they've been around for like 10 years now, I think. Maybe less than that, maybe a little less than 10 years, but they've been around for a while. And the fact that they're still going, you can still buy cars from them, there must be something they're doing right, right? There's no way they could still be having business. And that's not even talking about their issues with legal stuff. And granted, this stuff is nothing to, to scoff at. This is nothing to just brush away. I'm being, I'm being truthful here in the sense that they have messed up royally in the past uh, to the point where they've been sued for a, undisclosed amounts of money. I'm sure it's in the millions, maybe, maybe more than that. And it's for good reasons. I mean, there was title issues where they weren't giving people their titles and Granted, I have to be honest, I've only had the car for three days, so I cannot say for sure if I'll have any issues with the title. If I do, I'll make a follow-up video to this, you know, explaining any issues I have. But from the process overall, I, I don't really have any complaints, and I'll get to those in a minute. But they ran into some legal issues because the way Carvana does things with registration is you purchase the vehicle through them, and they actually do it all for you with the DMV. You don't have to go to the DMV and get plates or anything, registration or nothing. They do it all for you, which honestly, it's it's a dream, right? That just sounds amazing because I hate the DMV. Who loves the DMV? They do it all for you, and the fact that they give you the temporary plates and everything so you can drive the car right off the lot and drive around for 30 days and not have a really care in the world because they'll send you everything in the mail, the plates and the registration and all that, once they contact the DMV, really, it sounds too good to be true. And for some people it was, you know, and they never received their plates or their registration or their title if they bought the car outright. I'm paying it for monthly, I'm not, I didn't buy it in cash. But there's a lot of people that apparently bought their cars in cash and it took them like 11 months, not weeks, months to get their title. So yeah, you know, hearing those horror stories, it, it really makes you worry. Like, is this a good idea? Is this a good investment? Should I go with these guys? But then I started looking at other, you know, all of their alternatives. CarMax has the same amount of bad reviews. My local dealership, my Honda dealership had just as bad reviews. It, I think used cars in general, you're gonna run into lemons. You're gonna run into some people who, who sold their car for a reason. It wasn't just because they didn't like it, it was because it had issues. And that's up to the dealer of the vehicle selling it to disclose that to the customer. If they don't disclose that to the customer, they're gonna get the repercussions and the customer can rightfully be angry. And I think that's just what happens in the used car salesman business, right? And I think Carvana, it does cut a little corners here and there to make this, the, the overall process as seamless as possible for the customer. But I do think it ends up kind of getting thrown back in their face sometimes when there is issues because there's just things that are overlooked. They rave on their website about this 150 point inspection that they go through apparently and uh, meticulously look through every detail of the car to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to and it's tip top shape for the buyer at the time of purchase. And I think that's a wonderful thing and I think that's how it should be, but it really comes down to do you really think they actually do that with every vehicle? I, I truthfully can't even believe that. even even after, I'm saying that right now, even after I truly believe this car was put through that inspection because it is spotless. This car is gorgeous. I mean, it only had 27,000 miles on it, so I, I wasn't expecting it to be a pigsty, but I mean, it still smells like a new car. It looks like a new car. Everything, The I, I did record some of like the little scuffs and stuff on the outside of the car, but those were all illustrated in the original listing. There was nothing that was a surprise when I got to the car. Other than that, it was in immaculate condition and it rides beautifully. No issues at all. I had a full tank of gas when I got it. Had 
brand new oil change and everything. They even had a sticker up here the last time it had an oil change. Yeah, I mean, I've been blown away by the overall experience of Carvana in the terms of getting what was listed online and what it showed in the pictures and everything. Can I say for certain that's going to be for every vehicle? No. I mean, they definitely will have lemons, and that that's just the part of buying used vehicles. Can you take that on a Carvana? I don't necessarily think people need to jump the gun and say it's Carvana's fault entirely. But however, if it is false advertisement, you know, I've seen videos of people reviewing Carvana where on the website, the car looks brand new in the pictures, but then when they get there, the wheels are a different color, there's scratches everywhere that weren't listed in the original listing, there's a mirror missing, you know, stuff like that, right? If that's the case, then that is on Carvana 1000%, and they deserve the, the flack for that. But I do think after this experience, they must have learned something. You know, how can I have such an amazing experience and other people have such terrible experience? It's so weird. I don't, I don't really get it. But from my personal experience with it, I probably said that word 30 times in this video. Everything from the appointment date, which was set on May 8th at 3.15 p.m. to pick up at the Richmond, uh, Richmond, Virginia location, never changed. I never got any calls are saying it's it's being delayed or anything and I've heard many reviews of people saying the delays are terrible they had their car delayed like five times and granted of course that can happen anything can happen you can have a tow truck breakdown that's delivering the vehicle stuff happens right that's life so that is something I'm probably going to brush past because it, it is something that happens but for me it didn't I, I'm very grateful I didn't have to reschedule because I had to take a day off of work to go pick up the car and yada 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 so Monday comes around, we drive to Richmond, it's like a three and a half hour drive for me. We get up there and we get to the location, you know, we look up at the beautiful skyline of all the vehicles up in this glass, uh, I don't even know what you would really call it, a vending machine, I guess is how they marketed it. And it really does look like a vending machine. We sit down with this guy, he was super genuine, super nice. We talked about Better Call Saul and some other shows for a little bit. Uh, he, he gave me all the paperwork, he let me look it over, took all the time I needed. I signed the papers, it was literally like five pages, super simple, because most of the stuff you do at home online on the website, which again, is super seamless. I love the website, even their application is really well made. And after we signed the documents, he gives me this literal giant coin uh, that you put in the machine and then it goes up and it grabs your vehicle and it comes down and it spins, it shows you the car and it it's a spectacle. Now, you could argue, and I think this is the truth, they probably put a little extra money into the price of the vehicle overall for this experience of, you know, you're bypassing the dealer, you don't have to deal with an actual salesman, and you get this cool little spectacle to share in your social medias of this giant facility, and they gotta pay for that stuff. I get that. Personally, I might sound stupid for this, I would pay an extra thousand dollars for that experience of skipping the dealer, you don't have to sit with a salesman for six hours doing paperwork in person, and you could even run into an issue where you might get denied, right? Where you can learn all this online, at home, safety of your home, if you get denied, it's not embarrassing because you're not in front of people. So I think for that, I would pay an extra thousand bucks or whatever it is, I don't know what the actual fees are they add on their cars. But honestly, I got a really good deal in this vehicle for the price and the condition it's in and the amount of miles. Uh, I mean, I got I got a great deal on it. I can't I can't really deny it because of base off. If I were to go purchase this exact vehicle in this condition at a dealership at a Honda dealership near me, it, I would have been like six grand more. So I got it cheaper than I would have there, and I had a cool experience. So yeah, the car comes down. They drive it off the lot, they give you the keys, and they tell you a little bit more about the vehicle. Then they say, yeah, go in the parking lot, drive it around, you got seven days. And that's another thing too, that was a big thing on my mind, that like, that reassurance, that if you don't like it, you got seven full days to drive the vehicle, to look underneath it, bring it to a dealer, have it a full inspection, whatever you need, right? Seven days. If you don't like it, you bring it back, you get a full refund. The only thing that's not refunded is the delivery costs. So. If you decide to have it delivered to your house, it's a $500 roughly estimate on delivery to your house, so you don't have to go anywhere. You know, it's a luxury. You do not get that refunded. I kind of understand that. They gotta make money somewhere, right? So 500 bucks for it to deliver to your house. Now, I had to deliver to a location. I had to drive three hours to get there. It was, I think, $100 for shipping. So I, I would have lost or would lose 100 bucks if I decided to still return it. I still have a couple days left in my seven day return policy. But yeah, it's uh, it's a great feeling knowing that you have that in the back of your mind. Like if there if there is an issue, I'm I'm good. Try and think if I'm forgetting anything else. So yeah, 
you drive off the lot, we parked right in their parking lot, and I ask if I sit here, can I go through the whole car and everything? And they said, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. It's your vehicle now, so verify it, check it out before you even drive off the lot. And if you don't like it, you don't have to take it. You can just give it right back to them. They, they take the keys and you get a full refund. So that right there, I think is worth it in general because again, if you go to a regular dealership, yeah, you can drive around the car and you say you don't like it, you can leave, but they're, I'm sorry, they're not gonna let you do a full inspection in the parking lot. You're not gonna get to be able to get under the vehicle and get nasty and rip up the seats and stuff. You know what I mean? Like this is your car for the seven days. So yeah, you can you can look anything at anything you want to to verify it is the way to go. And it's the it's the deal you want to do and and yeah. And that being said, like I said, my car was spotless. It was exactly how it was illustrated on the website. It drives fine. I haven't had any lights or weird things pop up on the dash saying there's issues. It had the had brand new oil in it, full tank of gas. I literally have no complaints. Even the customer service, like I said, it was amazing there. Everyone there was super nice. You know, they're patting you on the back. They were clapping for you when the car comes down and stuff. Like, it's crazy, man. It's it's an experience. So, it, it is sad to me that I, I really couldn't find one video on YouTube of people saying they had a good experience. And I think that's that comes back to what I was saying about who goes out of the way to say they had a good experience unless it was above and beyond. And in this situation, I got to hand it to Kavana. This was above and beyond what I was expecting for a used car and for my first ever used car purchase. So that's why I want to make this video. I wanted just to say that I'm grateful for this vehicle. I'm grateful for, you know, their experience, making it easy as possible. And their payment system is super easy, auto pay and all that, blah, blah, blah. If there is anything I didn't really go over, if you have specific questions about the overall experience, or if you have second thoughts and you're having doubts or whatever, let me know in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I can with my experience and if anything, you know, any advice I can give. And again, if something happens with the registration, Again, I have 30 days with these plates, but if for some reason I don't get my title and I don't get my uh, actual plates that I need from the DMV within 30 days, I can't drive the vehicle, I'll be pretty mad. So I will have an update video if that is the case. If, obviously, if the plates arrive, there's no reason to make a video about that because it's the way it's supposed to be. So yeah, just keep on the lookout for that. Subscribe, of course, if you don't want to miss that update video if that does come. But I just wanted to get this out there just to show my experience and to say there is some positive light at the end of the tunnel with Carvana. I have had a good experience. I don't know if the company has a future. I know that they've had a lot of bankruptcy issues in the like in, in the talks right now, and they've dealt with legal issues in the past and for good reason. So I don't know. From my experience, I do hope that they they work out their quirks. They you know they deal with the issues they've had and they continue to move forward and they continue giving good experiences like I had for other people. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Leave like, share, support as always. Subscribe so I miss the next one. And we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace.